Okay, I'm going to continue on. I skipped ahead a little bit here and uh, went ahead and uh, at least wrote the control volume for the second feed water heater. And um, I, I didn't really, I didn't go through that. But again, if we put a uh, control volume on here and look at whatever crosses that control volume boundary, we put all those terms into the equation, we're going to have Z times H11 plus 1 minus Y minus Z times H2. And that has to equal to 1 minus Y times H3. So let's check and see how close to getting this equation right I got. Nope. Let's see if I can't fix it up here. What did we say? We had 1 minus Y times H3. Now again, how did we get that? We're looking at what flows through this branch, 1 minus y minus z, what flows through this branch, z, and then when we add 1 minus y minus z to z, we get 1 minus y. So this flow rate has to be 1 minus y. So um, I think I've got the first line of this equation correct now. I have to uh, fix my algebra here because I've got it, uh, got it screwed up. This needs to be 1 minus y in the numerator. Times this whole thing. Right. In other words, I get a 1 minus y times h3, but I also get a 1 minus y times h2 coming from the other side of the equation. And then the denominator is just h11 minus h2. So I need to find uh, h2 and h3 and H11. So we've got H3. Uh, we need to find H2 and we need to find H11. So uh, how are we going to find H2? Uh, that's going to be the isentropic pumping from state 1. So we've got to find state 1, isentropic pumping to state 2. And then how about H11? Well that's going to come from the entropy, isentropic expansion through the turbine, and the pressure at 11. So the entropy 11 is equal to the entropy 7. So let's see if we can get all that going here. i got to put that uh, H1 is just uh, saturated liquid as a function of the pressure at P1. So we know that. And then uh, we need, um, well, we're going to do this one the old fashioned way as well. We need V1. We did that just like this. Meters cubed per kilogram. And then the work from 1 to 2 is equal to the specific volume times the pressure 1 minus the pressure 2. And so that's not much, but that's kilojoules per kilogram. And Finally, we can find H2 as just being equal to um, H1 minus the work from 1 to 2. Let me go back and check that other one I did earlier and make sure I got that right. Did I get it right? Are we all paying attention? Let's see. In other words, yeah, no, I got it wrong. This entropy, enthalpy has to be more than this enthalpy because of the work. So I had the sign wrong here. Yep, it's minus the work. Okay, changes a few things, but not much. Changes that number just a tad. Okay, so back to the future here. We're still looking at finding these numbers. I got H2, um, H3. I believe that's the saturated liquid, is it not? H3 is saturated liquid at um, the 
P3. Uh, we already had that. Yeah, we got H3 right here. Uh, we need to find H11. H11 we need to find from the fact that S11 is equal to S7. And we had isentropic expansion. Yep, so with S11 then, we should be able to find H11 from uh, the pressure and entropy, pressure um, 11. Entropy 11. There we have it. So let's see if we can calculate that. Z fraction is equal to 1 minus the Y fraction times H3 minus H2 divided by H11 minus H2. Uh-oh. Then we come up with about 13%. So it's a much bigger fraction of uh, steam that's taken out at that point. Yeah, we probably got enough there. Okay, so we've got the fractions Y and Z. So that's the hard part, if you will. But we still need to be able to come back and, excuse me, we still need to come back and uh, find out how much work is done by this turbine, for example. So uh, we need to know how much work is done by the turbine, and we need to know how much work is done by each of the pumps. So this is a little bit tricky because we have different mass flow rates through different parts of the turbine. So uh, the, the, the net, <laughs> again, if we look at this control volume, whatever cuts the control volume is what we need to take into account. So I'm trying to adjust the control volume here so it cuts through the work. So we have the work coming out here. And we want to write the work in terms of per unit mass flowing in the boiler. And to do that, we just take into account the fractions flowing in each branch. So in other words, we'll do a first law analysis here. And we'll sum uh, all the energies coming in and subtract all the energies going out and that will equal the amount of work that's being done here per unit mass in the boiler. So it looks like we're going to have um, yeah I probably need to extend this just a tad to, to clear it up but we're going to have one that's the mass flow rate at 7 times H7 and then we're going to have minus Y times H8 and we're going to have minus Z times H11 and then we're going to have minus uh, 1 minus Y minus Z times H12 and that's got to equal uh, the net output of the turbine per unit mass uh, in the boiler. So let's see if I can express that as an equation. So let's put a control volume and I'll cheat a little bit and copy this equation down here see what we can come up with. 
it's going to be completely different. So let's just wipe this whole thing out. And what we have is 1 times H7. Uh, that's going in. That has to equal what goes out, which is going to be uh, Y times H8. Uh, plus Z times H11 plus 1 minus Y minus Z times H12. Plus the work in the turbine. I've lost my, there we go, plus the work for the turbine. Let me see if I can stand by that. H7, and then we've got Y times H8, and we've got Z times 11, and then we've got 1 minus Y minus Z times 12. And that's got to equal the power output of the turbine per unit mass 7. Let's see if that gives us something meaningful. So WT then is equal to H7 minus Y fraction times H8 minus Z fraction times H11 minus 1 minus Y fraction minus Z fraction times H12. Looks like we don't have H12 defined and we don't have Z fraction defined. So we're going to have to go back and sort that out. And we're missing a parenthesis. So yeah, let's go back to the beginning. We don't need this. There we go. All right, so Z fraction, we can fix that. But the H12, what's going on with H12? H12 is what's coming out of the turbine at the lowest pressure. But remember, we'll find that from the isentropic property and the pressure property. So let's find that H12 is equal to HPS pressure uh, 12 and S, yeah, S12 is equal to S11 is equal to S7. I didn't put all that stuff in there, but let's do that. S12 is equal to S7. Isentropic expansion through the turbine. Okay, so put some names on here. It ought to all clear up. There we go. So um, this is a very long formula, so I won't be able to add extra explanation. But this is per unit mass flowing in the turbine, uh, excuse me, the boiler. Okay, um, not sure what he asked us to find here. I think he wants to find the net power output of the power plant. So yeah, how are we going to do that? We've got the output of the turbine, but we need to uh, account for the work of the pumps. But we'll do that the same way. We've got to take account of how much steam or water is flowing through each of these pumps. So we've got 1 minus Y minus Z in this branch. We've got 1 minus Y in this branch. And we've got 1 in this branch. 
Now, I don't think we've calculated that final work uh, five to six as yet, and maybe we need to go ahead and do that. Um, so let's say. So um, B5, did we do this? I don't think we did. Yeah, okay. B5 is equal to, and again, I'm doing it the old-fashioned way. So if you do it with pencil and paper, you'll get a similar answer. kilogram and so then the work five to six is equal to B5 times P5 minus P6 and we can demystify that thing and that's the biggest part of the work right there so But the, the total pump work is equal to uh, 1 minus Y minus Z times the first pump, which is 3 to 4, I believe it is, plus one minus y fraction times uh, work from yeah I'll get myself confused uh, one to two three to four five to six I can do that one to two three to four and then plus one times uh, the work from five to six and as you can see it's basically the work from five to six because those other two pumps operate through such a small pressure difference okay so finally the net work per unit mass flowing through the turbine is just WT plus WP and and really finally <laughs> he wants to know and that WP is negative so that adds up uh, the mass flow right through the boiler is what we use to scale this and we come up with um, about 30 megawatts 30.543 uh, megawatts and the author's answer is 30.5 uh, megawatts so I think we're I think we're all in the hunt here we've, we've done a pretty good job Okay, uh, let's pause here for now and see what else happens.